Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Rigatoni al Segreto. That's right, Segreto does mean secret, which is why I really shouldn't be showing you this recipe. But I'm gonna anyway, because this is just too delicious to keep to myself. And if you've never heard of it, this was the most closely guarded secret at one of New York City's most famous Italian restaurants, which is closed now, but went by the name of Gino's. And I will provide more details in the blog post. But for now, we need to get started with this amazing and formerly secret sauce. And the first thing you're going to need is some of these. One can of San Marzano plum tomatoes, straight from Italy. All right, except no substitutes. And as you can see, this has DOP right on the label, which of course stands for three Italian words that apparently start with D, O, and P. And if you compare this with a can of American plum tomatoes, it's not even close. Okay, no clear watery juice in this stuff. Just gorgeous, sweet, almost seedless tomatoes packed in what appears to be almost a tomato sauce. And before we use these, we're gonna to wanna to crush them or blend them until pretty smooth. And as you can see, I'm using one of these stick blenders, which while not as fun as crushing with your hands, is a lot quicker. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is set it aside and head to the stove where we're gonna cook some onions in olive oil. So we will set our pan over medium high heat and we will add some diced onions to about four or five tablespoons of olive oil, along with the traditional giant pinch of salt. And we're gonna cook those stirring for about five minutes or so, or until they start to turn translucent. And I probably should mention if you are familiar with Gino's secret sauce, I am using probably twice the onions as called for in the original recipe, but that's how I like it. And I think the sweetness of the onion goes perfect with the secret ingredient that you're gonna see later. But of course, having said that, all the exact ingredient amounts are up to you. You are, after all, the Marissa Tomei of making it your way. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and cook those onions in that olive oil until they lose their whiteness and look a little something like this, at which point we will add a couple cloves of crushed garlic and we'll give that a stir. And then stop me if you've heard this one before, but we're only going to cook that for about a minute because we don't want to brown the garlic. So we'll stir that in and, like I said, cook that for about 60 seconds or so before adding our next two ingredients, a pinch of hot chili flakes, as well as our San Marzano tomatoes. And as usual, anytime we add a can of tomatoes, we'll want to rinse that out with a splash of water, and we'll toss that in as well. And we'll stir all that together. And then what we want to do is this comes up to temperature and starts simmering, is adjust the heat to about, I don't know, medium to medium low. And we're gonna cook that, stirring occasionally, for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, so compared to a lot of tomato sauces, this is gonna be a pretty quick one. And fair warning, because we're not gonna cover this, and we're using kind of a wide pan, there is gonna be some reduction, which as you'll see later is not gonna be a problem. So we'll go ahead and let that cook. And other than giving it a stir once in a while, there's not a lot to do. Although I did wanna show you one tip here. You see that tomato sauce is kind of caramelized onto the side of the pan? Believe it or not, that's actually how you make tomato paste. So whenever you go to give this a stir, what we want to do is scrape that into the sauce. Okay, not only will clean up be easier later, but that's actually going to add a lot of flavor and produce a more beautiful color. But anyway, like I said, we're going to let that cook for about 45 to 60 minutes, giving it a stir once in a while, and of course, like I just said, harvesting some free tomato paste. And once that's cooked long enough, we'll turn our heat down to low, and we'll proceed to cook our rigatoni in some boiling salted water. And while we wait for our pasta to cook, let me go ahead and show you the rest of the ingredients. Starting with the secret ingredient to the secret sauce, some butter. Oh yeah, believe it or not, the whole key to this is a half a stick of butter, which was hopefully made from the milk of grass-fed cows. And it should be nice and cold, and as you can see, we cut it into cubes. And then besides the butter, we're gonna need some basil, which in the original recipe, the leaves are added whole, but personally, I do like to slice those up before they go in because I'm just not crazy about the mouthfeel of a whole wilted basil leaf. And then last but not least, we're gonna need some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. The real stuff, Parmigiano Reggiano. And what we're gonna to wanna to do when our pasta is about five minutes away from being cooked is go ahead and stir in about two thirds of our basil. All right, we'll save a little bit for the end. And we'll go ahead and stir that in at this point, whether you're using whole leaves or you're gonna slice it up like I did. And then once that basil's in, we'll go ahead and add our butter and stir that in. And again, our heat's on the lowest setting. And those cold chunks of butter are gonna emulsify in 
just like they do when we use them to finish a pan sauce. And then as soon as the butter disappears, we will do the exact same thing with our cheese. And you probably could add it all at once and not have much of a problem. But since I still had a minute or two left of my pasta, I went ahead and added it in two or three smaller additions. And by the way, if it looks like we reduced our tomato sauce too much and it seems too thick, that's not going to be an issue because when we add the rigatoni in here, there's going to be a good amount of water that comes with it. And once that's stirred in, we should have the perfect texture, or at least what I think the perfect texture is. But regardless, we'll go ahead and stir in our cheese, at which point, assuming our pasta is cooked, we'll go ahead and transfer that in. And as I do, you can probably see a little bit of that water I'm talking about. And then what we'll do once our sauce has been rigatonied is grab our serving spoon and give it an initial stirring to coat it with the sauce. At which point we go ahead and add the rest of our basil and give it one last mix until those pieces of pasta are perfectly coated. And of course, as always, we're gonna taste for salt, which I did, and I added some. I just didn't film it. I wanted to, but muscle memory got the best of me. And I tossed it in before I realized I wasn't filming. But anyway, you guys know the drill. We'll of course taste and make sure it's seasoned to our liking. And once perfect, we'll go ahead and spoon that up into some pasta bowls. And quite possibly finish with some extra cheese. And that's it, my rigatoni al segreto is done. And while it may look fairly unremarkable, the taste of this is anything but. While very simple, it is just an amazingly delicious sauce. And other than how incredibly tasty it is, what I love about this is nobody's going to be able to figure out the secret ingredient. Because butter is not really something someone thinks of when they think of tomato sauce. So once your guests get done moaning and groaning in pleasure, they're probably going to ask you something to the effect of, what the heck is in here? And then you're going to have to say, sorry, it's a secret. I can't tell you. Or I guess you could. Or better yet, give them a link to this video. But anyway, that's it. My take on Salsa Segreto. In case you're wondering how I got this recipe, I knew a guy who knew a guy who didn't know anything. But he knew another guy, and that guy knew a guy that knew this recipe. Which is really all I can say without endangering him. So whether you share the secret to this secret sauce or not, I still really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.